I'm, this, my name is Andras Cher, and uh, I'm originally from Hungary, Europe, and, but I now live in uh, near Boston, the US. And I look at identity and access management technologies, uh, specifically enterprise role management, how you can create roles for enterprises. Um, look at user account provisioning, and web single sign-on and some entitlement management strategies as well. So today's talk is all about enterprise roles, and I want to just do a real quick, real quick uh, question here. How many of you have implemented a user account provisioning? Just raise your hand. How many have you implemented web single sign-on? Okay. How many have you implemented enterprise roles or some like, like kind of role management? What what are you using? I'm a, a Sun partner. Okay. Since, uh, okay. So. Okay. Good. So, so how many people have implemented enterprise role management in, in their organization as an end user or client for this? Okay. Okay. Um, so, one of the biggest things that we take away from conversations with <coughs> with with, part, with our customers that ask us questions about uh, enterprise role management and identity management is clearly. What are some of the things? What are you know? How do we view this market? And the and the answer to this is really role-based access control is really an elephant's you know, size business problem that you solve by IT. And I can I can't stress this enough. Um, unless you understand that role-based access control is 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 really a a business problem and not a technology problem, you cannot be successful in this. So. Really, 70% of the project is clearly about communication, people, politics, getting people ready to understand the value of enterprise role management, and only 30% of it is, is, is really technolo uh, technology and implementation. Okay? And the other question is, you know, all, do all these projects take a year, 15 months, 18 months to, to complete? And the answer is no, not necessarily. You can get the results in a much shorter period of time. You can get the results in three months, four months, or six months. So you have to scope your activities such that you're able to get value out of the project every three to six months. So, okay. Um, let's look at so, the agenda today. The introduction is really all about just giving you an idea about uh, what an enterprise role is, um, how the roles work, and what, what they are in general, and then I'm going to jump into some role-based access control our best practices. To, this is basically a summary of what we've seen uh, in, in the marketplace. I'm going to talk a little bit, little bit about products here. And uh, I'm going to present a case study of a large financial services company in North America. Okay? Um, there's going to be some time at the, at, the, at the end for questions. So you can grill me with questions, ask any difficult questions you want. That's what I'm here for. So what's an enterprise role? An enterprise role is really a collection of entitlements um, that relate to one business function. And so if you look at this, um, oh, let me see if there is a, a pointer here. Is there, is there a laser point, middle one? Ha, <laughs> unbelievable. The wonders of technology. So if, if you have basically a, a customer service agent, right, who works in a call center and um, they need certain levels of access, right? Uh, to a CRM system, a call center application, email, or an expense tracking system. Uh, you can do two things, right? You can either assign these functions and, assign, and, and, and entitlements using manual processes, like most people do, or you can say that, hey, everyone who works in a call center, i.e. Jane Crowley, our, our person who's hired for a customer service representative job, needs to have this access. So if you can group all this access into, into a role, an enterprise role, and you basically assign this enterprise role with all the entitlements to these applications that you see on the left, then this person, Jane Crowley, is going to get all the access to the, to the applications. Now, how, do you, how, do you, how does this work in reality? There's two fundamentally different ways. One of them is that the manager Sue Smith can basically do a workflow-based approval, right, and assign the roles in either manually or automatically. Or you can have a user account provisioning system that actually takes an authoritative feed from an HR system and uh, puts 
basically processes all this in, in, a, in a provisioning engine and makes all the changes in the right endpoint. So this is this would be the CRM system call center email and expense tracking system. So this is a fairly uh, standard way of, of, of representing things here. If you look at the the whole area or the life cycle of how this is actually implemented, and we get this question all the time, you know, how do you implement? Uh, what is the right order to implement uh, a role management? What, how do people go about this? Um, we've seen that a lot of people's business requirements are, are, are different, right? There's no one good answer to this question. There are some people who might be going from audit findings and security breaches and they've been hit by those. In, in that instance, you see identity audits, attestation and access recertification. It's really one, one and the same thing. It's basically a periodic process where the managers get a list of all their employees' access rights, right? And they have to sign off on those. Or the application owners get a list of people who have access to their applications and they have to sign off on those. So it's, it's somehow controlling who can have access to what and periodically reviewing who has access to what. On the, on the other hand, um, a lot of times when you, when you do this and you cleaned up a lot of your entitlements, you may want to decide that uh, you, you want to group these entitlements into, into these job roles that I talked about. So in that, this case, you can talk about role discovery, management, and recertification of, of roles. Most companies who start there start from some level of a SOX com compliance question or segregation of duties enforcement. And finally, there's a number of people who really want to solve this problem by um, automating, by, by increasing IT efficiency and automation, right? In, in those instances, you have uh, a provisioning system put in. So in our, in our recent wave study, we decided that we were going to ca encapsulate uh, the whole area of identity audits and access recertifications and role management into the, into the provisioning area because most products these days that do provisioning do some level of access recertification and also role management. 